Thank you for being here. Glad you're here. Thank you for uh, for the introduction and uh, tomorrow Veteran Days. Once again, thank you for all of the servicemen that uh, provide the service to our country. So thanks, thanks again. My name is Officer Tran. I'm uh, obviously with the Largo Police Department, and I've been with the department going on to 19 years now. Um, I've been in this position uh, about four years, so um, I love what I'm doing, and this is a, uh, a great opportunity for me to be here. Um, recently, your um, community have reached out to me and asked um, about the Neighborhood Watch Group program and what's my opinion on, on it, and they would like me to come in and talk to you about this. Obviously, everything has two sides to the story or two, uh, and, you know, the pro and the con to it. But what exactly is a neighborhood watch? And I'll just keep this as uh, basic as it can be. Um, I like to view the neighborhood watch as like a network. A network between neighbors, the community within uh, your community, and a network between your community and the police department. Because you are the eyes and the ears that we need in order for us to do what we uh, sign up to do, protect and serve. There's a lot of things that's going on in your community that I may not know, or any other patrol officer in the department may not know, but you know. You live here. So the Neighborhood Watch Group is about communication, okay? Because we as law enforcement need good information in order for us to make good decisions. Is that correct? I mean, the same, the same rule applies for any, any community. But a communication is a two-way communication. And what essentially are we doing, and why are we doing it? I like to view it as a neighborhood watch group, the way it's designed is to reduce crime, fear of crime, and to improve the quality of life within your community. So how do we reduce crime and fear of crime? You know, what, what are some examples? People trespassing on your property. You, I have heard that people jump the fence toward the uh, back part of your park, jumping the fence, and using this as a cut through. Now, this is a private community, is it? This is a private property. If someone's jumping the fence, if you live there in that corner and you see that person, should you be calling? I think you should be calling. We now have the trespass authorizations out here in this community. What that means is if you call us, granted the priority may not hop, right? So it's based on the call for service that we are holding in our CAT system. But let's say if you call and there's nothing on the screen and they dispatch two officers to the location because you call and say there are two individual or one individual wearing this description just jumped over the fence and they are last seen on this road. We will respond to your location. We will conduct an area check. If we happen to see the subject and you indicate to our dispatch that you would like them to be trespassed from your park, because we now have that form, we can now issue that trespass. What about people that's going around knocking on doors? Can they be subjects you know, of scouting your area? Yes. Yeah, you know. Do you know that they have to have a permit within the city of Florida? They have to have a permit. Doesn't matter if they work for Dukes or Spectrum or whatnot. If they are going around knocking on doors, asking for business, they have to have the city permit. So if you see someone as part of the neighborhood watch or the community members here, see someone that are knocking on doors, you can give us a call. We can come out and we can ascertain that person's identity. We will run that subject for warrants and warrants. We will take their information and we conduct a field, uh, what we call a field contact information. If need to, we will trespass that subject, right? What about uh, reducing crime by have bicycle registrations, golf cart registration? How does that reduce? I mean, obviously I can't stand here and tell you 
that by doing that, your bike is not being stolen, or your golf cart is not being stolen, but the chance of us recovering it or identifying it is easier, right? So you can, you can do that. But the things that we do on a daily basis that you and I may not aware of, it's what the term called natural surveillance. That's what I want you to understand. Natural surveillance refer to stuff that you do daily. You do it naturally, but you didn't realize that you were doing it. For example, how many of you ride a golf cart here? Okay. The method of tra transportation is a golf cart. You left your house and you took whatever road to the clubhouse. What did you do in between? You just pay attention to where you're going, right? Naturally. But now, let's slow down a little bit while you're going from your place to the clubhouse. As you were driving, instead of just having that goal and objective in your mind is I need to get to the clubhouse. Now I have an another goal objective is that I want to look left and look right between the road that I'm traveling to see what out there that's considered suspicious. What if you're traveling on that path and you notice there's a vacant home and you know of that vacant home and there's lights on. Now if you just go and uh, on and drive here on your golf cart and you didn't pay attention, you may miss it. Right? So the neighborhood watch group, the way it's designed to reduce crime and the fear of crime. But it's take a community though. I know there's a group. A group may be two, three person, five person, but it's still a small group. How many units are in this mobile home? Eight, over 800, right? You can have, let's say if I take the map and I cut it down to four quadrants, and each quadrant have a block captain. And if, let's say if there are only two people volunteer in that quadrant, that's only three person. Can you have three person look out for that big quadrant? No. That three neighborhood watch members still relying on you because you are the eyes and the ears. Relying on the natural surveillance that you do on your daily routine that you didn't pay attention to. Now you slow down a little bit and you pay attention to. Statistically speaking, burglaries happen during the daytime. Home burglaries. Vehicle burglaries happen during the nighttime. Because a lot of time, they just go in and try on doors. For residential burglaries, people go to work during the daytime, and they come and they scout the neighborhood. I strongly believe residential burglary does not take place during the daytime in your community because a lot of you are retirees here and a lot of mobile home uh, community like yourself are very active during the daytime but not so much when the suns go down so the auto burglary is going to still going to be there but what can we do to deter the residential uh, burglary and a lot of those burglaries happen in units or community like yourself or in vacant homes. Homes that someone have left, let's say, go, going back to the north for a couple months. So as part of the neighborhood watch group and part of the community, if you have that, if I go on away back in Canada or up, up north during the uh, summertime, I would contact my neighborhood watch squad leader or block captain, and I'm like, hey, I'll be gone. Please keep an eye out uh, for my property. You are more than welcome to walk on my property and do an outer perimeter check. You are more than welcome to jiggle on that door handle to make sure that it's still locked and secure. And that the, that's, that's part of the neighborhood watch group. That's the responsibility that, that we want you to know that you can, you can do. But you have to have that permission, all right? That's how you reduce crime. That's how you reduce uh, uh, the fear of crime. Now, what about vacant home that have changed over? Are we kind of like telling people that this is a vacant home? 
you know, I strongly suggest not to do that. I strongly suggest to be a friendly neighbor. If I'm a snowbird and you live here and I know you live here year round, I want to be friend with you because when I go up north, I don't like to say, hey buddy, you can park in my driveway. <laughs> Maybe now and then you can park in my driveway. All right. Maybe I'm not, uh, I don't put shoes outside of my home. When I'm saying, hey, why don't you just put a couple shoes outside of my home and change every now and then? What am I doing? I'm fooling the subject. I'm creating an atmosphere saying that there are someone that's still living here. Every now and then, there are cars here. Every now and then, there's human activity here. All right? What if I leave my car there? I have a car cover over it. And, you know, it's been there for three months. You know, if I scout around, I will notice that. There isn't an easy answer for it, but if, I, if that was me, I would not put a car cover. I will, like I said, I will make friends with my neighbors and say, hey, please just spray down my car with waters every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Making my driveway wet. Again, what am I creating? A false picture, right? But I'm showing there's human activity because I can tell you right now, most of the mobile home uh, community like yourself, all of the residential burglaries take place in a vacant units. Okay, and it most of the time happens during the nighttime. No one knows. So that's how you reduce count. And part of the neighborhood watch group, we pay attention to that. You know, we pay attention to the lighting as we volunteer ourselves in this task, right? Now, I have talked about that briefly, but what about the improve the quality of life? Well, how does the neighborhood watch group can do that? Think about this. How many of you live alone? How many of you live alone and have a medical condition or physical condition that is hard to get around? As a part of Neighborhood Watch Group, we should mark that down in, as a block cap. If Susan lived in my quadrant and she lived alone and she had difficulty walking, I should check on her regularly. Even if Susan or George is a hermit and doesn't like anybody, <laughs> if I knock on George's door and George yell out, say, leave me alone. What does that tell me as a watcher? He's alive. <laughs> Even though I haven't seen him for three days, the mail is stacking up. But he's alive. But is it okay if you're concerned? Even though he said, leave me alone, but you're like, man, it's four days. I have to pick up his mail. He, he, he has this routine that he come out and pick up the newspaper. And it means four days. Even though I heard him yelling. I'm not sure what I should do. Let me call my block captain. Let me call the person in charge of the neighborhood watch group. See what we can do. And ultimately, I may get a phone call. So after Tran, what should we do? And that's how, that's how we communicate. And I will tell you what we should do. In that case, I'm like, well, you know what? Let's have an officer actually come and knock on the door. We do what we call a welfare check, right? So that's, we're looking out for each other not necessarily about crime per se. We each teach each other welfare. We are good neighbors, right? What, what other thing that we can do as to improve our quality of life? Events, special events. The Neighborhood Watch Group can take part in that special event. And the goal is that the Neighborhood Watch Group should be part in those events because you want to show the community that you are active. Okay, because there is a downside to the neighborhood watch group, which we will talk about, the negative side of it. Okay? There is an event coming up soon, speaking of that. Um, there is an event called a safety sleigh ride. Okay? You all have seen this on your table? Alright, this event is hosted by uh, Largo FD and Largo PD. We are having a partnership with the Palms to make this happen. We kind of bribe you with lunch boxes and gifts. 
in order for us to give you information and resource that we think is essential, we think that you should need, you know, the fraud information that you may want to take a look at it, believe it or not. There may be victims in here of fraud right now in, in this, this uh, town hall meeting and, and uh, no one knows about it, okay? And people say, well, it's not going to happen to me. Trust me, it can happen to you, okay? They will play with your emotion, they will play with the emergency, stuff like that. So, this is a good event to have. What other event? You have Christmas coming up, right? I heard you're going to have a Christmas parade. The Neighborhood Watch Group can organize that with the Largo Police Department and have us come in and be part of the parade. We have done that with the um, Palm Hills. Okay? Palm Hill asked us last, last year, uh, either last year or 2019, I forgot. I don't think it's last year. 2019. We came in with a cruiser and uh, I think two motorcycles and we take part of the parade. And that shows the community pride, that shows the community getting together, doing things. Improve the quality of life, okay? What other things that we can do? Not only to improve, but to reduce crime. Like I said, the bicycle registrations, the golf cart registration. Um, we did done that at Holiday Ranch. We've done that at uh, Embassy Mobile Home Park. We've done that at El Dorado Mobile Home Park, and it's hosted by the Neighborhood Watch Group. Because we, the, neighbor, the watch group, want to know, want you to know that they are active. They are doing this. And by doing this, there may be other program every quarter or every six months that training take place that you all can attend. So you all can learn about things that can, can uh, help you not to become a victim. Right? But there are, some, there are things that you, you should do and there are things that you should do as a neighborhood group. Obviously, if you look at this, the do's and don'ts, and I know some of you may not have, I won't read through all of it, but I read what the don'ts. The do's is easy, but the don't. If you are a, a member of the neighborhood watch or even just a member of your community and if you see somebody suspicious, do you have the right to detain that person? No, you don't. Even though this is your private property, you are a witness. I don't encourage you to make contact with the subject or to become confrontational with the subject. Should you decide to do that, that is, decide to make contact with the subject, that is your personal preference. Now, if you do decide to do that, I do have something I want to say. Instead of being confrontational, approach in a manner like so. Hi, my name is Tran. I'm with the Neighborhood Watch Group Welcoming Committee. I have really not seen you in this uh, community before. I haven't seen you in any of our event before. What is your name? You seem a little lost. How can I help you? <laughs> Just by the contact with, if you decide to do that and if you approach in that manner, the chance of the chance of you not getting into a fist fight is is you know is probably more than likely, right? But I don't encourage you to do that. If you approach in a non-confrontational way, it's probably better for you. Okay? And if in that moment that you make contact and have that communication, you will probably determine that this person probably does not live here. And it's okay for you to say, look, I really don't think you live here. I think you should leave. This is private property, and I will get on the phone and have an officer come out to issue the trespass. It's okay for you to say something like that. We are not here to yell. We're not here to have a, a yelling match or, or to, to screaming match with the subject. Trust your instinct, okay? Now, if you decided to, because there are some neighborhoods that have a watch group and they patrol at night, and they sometimes they do it in the golf cart pair or the, the car. Obviously, if you see a suspicious vehicle, you are not going to pull that car over. Okay, you are not going to pull that car over. 
your job is to get the tag information and call us. Stay as far back as you can, okay? And once again, you are not law enforcement. You don't have the right to detain anybody. You cannot enforce anything. It's different than if you're walking in this, you know, let's say in the morning, you're walking with, the, you know, with your friend and all of a sudden you see some a, a subject attack another person who's helplessly being attacked. And you make that personal decision to help. Now, I think I would probably make that personal decision too, because we're talking about another person who is overpowering another person and that person is being, you know, a victim. It's different. Okay, we're talking about crime against property. I don't encourage, again, anybody to confront the subject. And the question I always get is, well, Officer Tran, when we call you, it takes you 30 minutes to get here. <laughs> Sometimes an hour to get here. Well, I'm sorry, the truth, that's the truth. Some is based on the call for service, and it's based on the urgency of your call. Okay, I'll give you an example. If night fall like this and you see individual that lurking, going between houses, between units, th that is not a trespass. That is called loitering and prowling. When you call, you want to say, there is a subject I've seen. This is what he's wearing or she's wearing. He was looking between cars, ducking between mobile home, unit one and two. That's a lot more than prowling. They'll come here faster. Versus during the daytime, oh, I've seen a kid that is cutting through, he's on the sidewalk, he's, he's not supposed to be here. You see the difference between priority, right? So even if it takes us maybe 30 minutes to respond here, guess what? We responded out here, we conducted an area check, we drove around your community in a mark cruiser, you got a patrol check as well, even if we didn't make contact with the subject. And it's okay for you to do that. Because if you don't do that, the next day you discover so-and-so house get broken into, I'm like, oh man, I should have called. I should have called. So I encourage you to call if you see something suspicious. So how do you, when you call, and what kind of description you give to dispatch is very important. This is something that I would probably gonna, if you sign up to the neighborhood watch group, there's something that I have to explain to the neighborhood watch group, but I more, I'm gonna explain to everybody here because this is important information. I use the term HALT, H-A-L-T. When you call and you see a suspicious person, what you do is you describe from the head which is H. A stands for adamant, referring to the clothing. L, referring to the leg, but we're actually referring to the pants, the shorts. T, toes, but we don't really want to look at toes. <laughs> what we were saying is look at their shoes. Because a lot of these guys wear multiple layer of clothing. You can describe a black blazer, black pants, and a white t-shirt underneath. With a Nike shoes, white in color. When we encounter a subject, he may not wearing black blazer, may not wearing a white shirt underneath. He may have a different color. He may have khaki pants now, or khaki windbreaker but he has a white Nike. They don't bring a secondary shoes, footwear. So if you can give a description and you can give the footwear, it helps us a lot. So when our canine track the subject and it encounter the subject, that subject is gonna have a lot of explaining to do. So that's how you do it. So I encourage that, obviously, the Neighborhood Watch Group, the the bad side about the neighborhood watch group is short-lived. That is a very true to it. Because this is a volunteer program. I can't say, hey, join the neighborhood watch group, 
your responsibility is five hours a month. You're like, no, I'm retired. I don't want to put in five hours. It's on my time. I do whenever I want. And I have a great idea about that. To participate in Neighborhood Watch Group, or even, let's say if you didn't sign up and you had this, this presentation, think of it this way. Don't make it a burden that you have to do this. Make it fun. Okay? I know a lot of people said, I drove the golf cart. Identify the people in your room, in your block, that like to drive golf cart. Ride together. Ride together. But this time, while you're riding together, you make a mental note in your area. What's happening? Hey, that light is, is out. We need to let the block captain know. The light on 4th Street is out. We need to let them know so they can contact the, the correct people who have come out. Boy, those two vacant houses are extremely dark. Let's see if the neighborhood watch group uh, block captain know the, the, uh, the, uh, the owner. Have them uh, turn on the light or motion light or a dust suit on light. Right? So now you have a purpose. You have pets in here? Yes. You're allowed to walk your pets? Yes. Okay, identify people that like to walk the pets. Only on our property. Oh, oh. Only on our property. Well, that, that's not really walking pets. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean, what I'm trying to convey is find a person in your street that have a common interest with you. Whether you see Susan like to walk at 5 p.m. all the time, that is her routine to go exercise. Let me partner up with her and exercise with her. Make it fun. Don't make it like, you got to do this five hours. Well, no, Tran, I don't have to do it five hours. I do whatever I want to do. Right? Because you, if you do that, and people don't make it feel like it's a job. It's all volunteer here. So you find that common interest and, and, and get it done. So yes, the Neighborhood Watch Group can only work if you make it work, if you want to make it work. I don't live here. I don't know your community that well. When I drive around here, I have to pay attention to the lot. Just in case something happened, I got a call out for it. I'm at this lot number, right? Whereas for you, you may know a little bit better than me what street you on and so on and so forth. If you pay attention to your neighbor to the left, you pay attention to your neighbor to the right, you pay attention to your neighbor in front of you, and the neighbors in the back of you, you pay attention to their routine, and when that happens, something is out of the normal, that's when you're like, wait a minute. That is not their routine. That is not the normal in this community. So, that's all I have. That's all I can say at this moment. I will stay here for the remainder of the meeting, your meeting. If you have any questions, if you have any, it doesn't have to be a neighborhood watch topic, it could be anything, you can come and, and talk with me. Uh, I hope that by signing this, it doesn't mean that you say I will be part of the Neighborhood Watch Group if you put your name on there. Just say that I'm interested in. And when we have people, we have that, that group, we're going to have the second meeting. And this is when we're going to get out of the map and look at the map and see what can we do, which quadrant can someone take, you know, uh, take, be part of that. Thank you. Thank you.